Hello, so this is your last lesson of unit one content with me and we're carrying on with gender as explained by the social approach going on from Monday's lesson, so looking at the evaluation. So as always, have your pen and paper ready to make some notes. Your starter is this scenario. Whilst at primary school, Tatiana spent most of her time with other girls. She had two sisters but no brothers. When given the choice, she always preferred to play with other girls and with girls' toys. But by the time she was 13, Tatiana did not feel she was a real girl and wanted to be a boy. But she felt a lot of pressure to behave like a girl. It made her so unhappy, she saw a counsellor who suggested she might have gender dysphoria. Use the social approach to explain Tatiana's gender identity as a child and as an adolescent. So pause me now, refresh your memories if you need to by looking back in your notes or your textbook and just write me a few bullet points of things that you could use to answer this question. In terms of childhood, you could have said that um, self-identification of gender membership is crucial during childhood. Um, gender segregation occurs as well during childhood, so um, girls tend to play with girls, boys tend to play with boys. And peers act as role models for gender typical behaviour. So girls will um, emphasise playing with dolls, boys will um, emphasise playing with footballs, etc. And they'll also sanction um, gender atypical behaviour. Sorry, that should say. And that's, for example, that would be calling a girl a tomboy if she wanted to play football. And then in adolescence, um, gender typicality. So adolescents compare themselves to their peers and they judge how gender typical they are. And they also have this felt pressure for gender conformity. Um, and when they don't conform to their gender, then they feel this immense stress and it could lead to gender dysphoria. Last lesson, I asked you to complete these three questions. So pause me now if you need to go grab them. We're going to go through and mark them. So question one was, in the context of gender, explain what is meant by the term peer influences. So I've given a bit of a lengthy answer. You wouldn't have to write as much detail as this, but these are just some of examples of the things that you could have included. So you could say that peer influences refers to the effects that other people of the same age have on how we view our gender. It's asked about gender, so you need to mention gender for the marks. Um, you could have gone into specific of things that happen um, during childhood. So peer peers influence gender identity by acting as models for gender typical behaviour. Or you could have talked about adolescence. People judge their gender typicality by comparing themselves to people in the gen in their gender category. Question two was give three features of the social approach that can explain um, the gender a child identifies with. So you could have talked about self-identification of gender membership, um, as in children choose their own gender. Uh, conformity to gender roles, which is the extent to which a person identifies with a gender typical role. So females acting as females, males acting as males. And then you could have also mentioned gender segregation which is the tendency to spend more time with people of your gender category. You might have said other things, which is fine, as long as there was enough detail there for three marks. And then question three was explain how conformity to gender roles can explain atypical gender. So this is specifically in adolescence. So peer pressure is a major cause of stress for adolescents who do not conform to gender role norms. This is because they are trying to cope with a role that many still feel is socially accept unacceptable. The stress associated with a non-conforming ident identity may explain the incidence of gender dysphoria and accompanying psychologically ill health. If you described how it explains gender typical behaviour, you would have received no marks because the question specifically asked for atypical behaviour, which is when we behave in a way that's not typical. Okay, so today we're moving on to evaluation and I think this is the bit that we all need to strengthen um, in terms of exam skills. 
because there's a lot of marks worth of evaluation in your exam. So thinking ahead to our PPEs. So what does evaluating something mean? We want to know whether the theory or the concepts that we've explained with um, the A01, with the description of a certain theory, is is it backed up by research or is it contradicted by research? So firstly, we need to have a point and your point will tell us, is it a strength or is it a weakness? And then it will state that strength or weakness. Then we need some evidence to support our point with an example. And then with the explanation, we need to ask ourselves, how does this evidence support our point? And why is it a strength or weakness? And always link it back to our point and the overall theory. I'm going to tell you the piece of evidence. And then your task is going to be to come up with the point. So you need to figure out whether it's a strength or a weakness. And then explain your point and your explanation and your evidence, sorry. So the first piece of evidence is gender segregation is a self-fulfilling process, which means that when children spend more time with same gender friends, they share interests and activities. Because they find this fun, they want to spend even more time together, which means they interact less and less with children of other genders. Same gender children have many opportunities to influence each other's identities and behaviours. This gender segregation cycle reinforces children's gender typical interests, beliefs and biases. So have a look at what we learned last lesson. Does this piece of research by Martin et al support what we have learned about the social approach in explaining gender or does it contradict it? So pause me now and try and come up with a point for this evidence. So your point should have read something like this. One strength is that gender segregation offers a plausible explanation of gender identity development. The point needs to link to the social approach in some way. So already we've spoken about gender identity and we've spoken about gender segregation, which we looked at last lesson. Now pause me again and think about how you're going to explain this. Why is this a strength? She could have said something along the lines of, this means that peer norms and conformity with them are likely to have a strong influence on developing gender identity in childhood, which clearly shows that it's a strength and the social approach is explaining gender identity effectively. Next piece of research is by Vicky Holt. She found that half their sample of adolescents referred in the UK for gender dysphoria reported being bullied. Canadian research by Mark Schiffman et al. showed that gender atypical young people were 4.5 times more likely to be bullied than gender typical participants. The experience of gender-based bullying was also strongly associated with behavioural and psychological issues such as depression and self-harm. Does this support or does it contradict what we've already learnt about gender dysphoria? It supports it, therefore it's another strength of the social explanations because we've found that research shows a strong link between gender non-conformity and being bullied. Therefore, as an explanation, you can write something along the lines of this supports the view that peer influences on gender non-conforming adolescents are mostly negative. Next evidence is in a study of Finnish adolescents um, referred for gender dysphoria, Katiala Heinu et al. found high levels of severe bullying at school. However, 75% of these participants reported the bullying began some time before they identified as gender atypical. The bullying was also mostly non-gender related, but links to other factors such as academic success. Is this supporting or is it contradicting what we have learnt about um, bullying and its effect on gender identity? Have a go at writing the point for this if you think it's a strength or a weakness. So this one is a weakness. 
Um, because being bullied and other negative outcomes of atypical gender may not be entirely explained by peer influences. The social explanations of gender on, say that only peer influences um, have an outcome for atypical gender development. This shows that many young people with gender dysphoria may have psychological and behavioural difficulties that are unrelated to the influence of their peers. So in other words, other things are causing these psychological and behavioural difficulties other than peer pressure to conform to their gender roles. And the last piece of research is that most research into peer influences have been indirect. The research investigates the impact on gender-related beliefs or behaviour rather than identity, but recent research into direct effects has drawn different conclusions. For example, Konienko et al., looked at how peers directly influence aspects of gender identity in adolescents. As expected, they found that peers significantly influence peer pressure for gender conformity. However, the researchers were surprised to find that peers were not significant influence on gender typicality. It appears that some aspects of gender are influenced by peers and some are not. Again, is this a strength or is it a weakness? of the social explanations of gender. It is a weakness because research has found that direct effects does not fully support peer influences. Again, it's showing that some aspects of gender are influenced by something else. Therefore, the findings of this study highlight the fact that direct peer influences on gender are complex because gender identity itself is complex. So peer influence cannot be the sole determining factor for gender identity. Therefore, it's a weakness because something else is explaining it. So remember with your appeals, never leave it on the evidence because you won't get full marks for that. You always have to explain your point and say why it's a strength or why it's a weakness. Your last task is to have a go at this nine marker. Now, the nine markers that I marked were very, very good. The overriding feeling was that we needed more evaluation because you were very good at describing, you were very good at applying to the scenario, but it needed more evaluation. And this question asks you to evaluate the view that gender is best explained by the social approach. In your answer, you should consider A, peer influences and conformity to gender roles, B, typical and atypical gender. And that is nine marks. So it's not a scenario question. So no marks for AO2 in this one. Only marks for AO1 and AO3. But because it's telling you to evaluate and not just discuss, the emphasis is on evaluation. So what you need to do is briefly explain peer influences and conformity to gender roles and typical and atypical gender and then using the evaluations that we've gone through today or you might find others on the internet if you do some research um, then explain um, why the social approach is a strength in explaining gender why it might not be a full explanation so you need about two or three peels for a good nine marker so have a go at that And as always, upload it. Any questions, please let me know.